as we gather this tabernacles at Yahweh's feast this year of 2005, we know it's not the true Hebrew year. We know it's not the true calendar of Yahweh. We know that it's an offshoot of what? The Justonian and the Gregory. Is this correct? Yep. And we're knowing that as a Catholicistic calendar, we know that time isn't right because nothing they teach is right. So this just proves within itself of what is happening and what has been done. You know, I'm a teacher of the old guard. And I've been teaching for 32 years. Yesterday I turned 63 years of age. So now over half my life I've been teaching this truth. The first half I was seeking it and never even knew it. But you know, Yahweh our Father is very merciful. And Yahweh our Father, before He brings you out of darkness into His marvelous light, it seems like He has to give you a good taste of the system where He wants you to taste the bad so when He does bring you out of darkness, you will appreciate the good. And all of us can attest to that because we've all been what? Accosted in one way or another, either by this evil government or the IRS or something whatsoever, a husband or whatever, But Yahweh makes us understand that we are to love and appreciate Him. And then, the first commandment that has been given, which is that we are to love Yahweh with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our spirit, and we shall have nothing or no one ahead of Yahweh. Because we have tasted the evil side of this daughter of Babylon that we presently have over our people, <clears throat> just as Jeremiah the prophet said we would. But we see great things happening. And Yahweh said, my flock is a little flock. I never realized quite how little it was. You know, there's 300 what you want to call people on the North American continent, which does not include Canada. <clears throat> I believe the whites in Canada now are a minority. It's getting to the point where they want to make the white race, Yahweh's people, the minority on the North American continent. Every day they strive for this. It is their goal, it is their way, but not our way. So as we come here and we bathe in Yahweh's truth and praise His name, there is a lot of controversy in the land. <clears throat> and the reason I say that I'm part of the old guard, because the others have passed on, which is Swift and Compre, Gale, Pastor Newman, Britton, and many of the others are gone. Because I still teach from a time before. For some people, I'm older than they are. I've taught more years than they are old. Many people believing and thinking in their heart as they went to their churches, no matter what they were, the Lutheran church, the Methodist church, the Catholic church, the Baptist church, they felt that they were being fed truth and that I.E. God was present in that church. Well, I.E. God was. They just didn't realize that it wasn't Yahweh. So our country has come into the crisis of which it now sits. Shame is upon our people. Scorn is upon our people. Where our people, who were once at the top of the ladder with Yahweh and prosperity and morality and ethnics and dignity, are now down many rungs of the ladder. And the other peoples among us are above us. And we truly have become the tail. And they have become the head. But today this lecture and this teaching as we are to do at the Feast of Tabernacles to celebrate the tabernacling of Yahweh in a flesh body with His people when He came as our kinsman redeemer because that's what He is. He's our kinsman redeemer. It states very explicitly and being that He's our kinsman redeemer kinsman means you come from the same family. So as we gather here on this Feast of Tabernacles, this is a family reunion. That's what this is all about. 
It's a big family reunion. Don't tell me about those family reunions out here with your pork hawks. <clears throat> out in some park out here. And with all these little mongrel babies that are part of the family reunion. This is the true family reunion that gets together three times a year and praises the name of their father, Yahweh. Now a lot of people speculate and they've come either out of the Catholic Church, they've come out of the Baptist churches, they've come out of the Lutherans and the Catholic or whatever, all right? And they've all been told, whenever you have a question that has never been answered, to either take it on faith or it's a mystery and it's not for you to understand and know. But this isn't true. And many of you told that there is a God, well there's many gods, and no matter what you call his name, he'll understand and realize who you're talking to. Well, I have a tape here by a person who says that Yahweh is not his name and you're to call upon the Lord and Jesus. And his name is Pete Peters. And I've warned people for many years that this man was not qualified. If you'd like a copy, I can make one for you. No problem whatsoever. But today we're going to have a study. <clears throat> and that study is going to be entitled, Yahweh is His Name. Why is it important? It's most important because he said, Those of mine who call upon my name in the latter days shall be saved, saith Yahweh. Now, as I've told you before, if George's name was Fred, and it isn't, and he was walking away, and I said, hey, Fred, Fred, he'd just keep walking. But if I said, George, he'd snap and turn around and say, what? You think our father's no different? The greatest name, listen to me carefully, the greatest name in heaven and earth, the greatest pronunciation of power and authority is Yahweh. That's what's very important to understand. I mean, if our Father created the heavens and He created the earth and He created everything therein, that's what it says in John 1, 1 to 7, isn't that true? You think His name shouldn't be the most powerful of all pronunciations of everything upon the earth? Doesn't the first commandment say that he comes first? If he comes first, then his name comes first. Is this correct? But we're going to get into this and we're going to solve this because I feel it's a direct responsibility that I have to Yahweh's people. And for those of you listening to DVD or VHS, wherever this is going to go, and it's going to go out there, believe me. It's time we settle the issue once and for all. It's time we put the axe to the root and stop the folly in this nation. Now what you're going to do with it is your business. It's not going to be my business because I'm going to take your blood off my hands. It's going to be between you and Yahweh. Between you out there and Yahweh. That's who it's going to be between. So you're going to have to decide this day whom you are going to choose if you are going to follow Yahweh, or if you're going to follow the Lord and God, and this Jesus. You think about what I'm speaking to you today, because it's very important. Because it might decide whether he gets his great eraser out, and erases your name out of the book of life. Because if you're insulted by calling your father his real name, he says, if you deny me, I will deny you. <coughs> Yahweh is his name. I'm James P. Wickstrom. I'm a teacher of Yahweh. My address is P.O. Box 102, Rhodes, Michigan. This is October 8th of 2005, and we are attending Yahweh's Feast of Tabernacles. Next, please. Yahweh. 
name that appears over 6,800 times in our historical writings is the name of our Heavenly Father. Now, why do I say our? Who do I mean by our? It's plural. Our is plural. Two or more. <clears throat> well, it's racial. Our is racial. They are the descendants of Jacob, the children of the covenant, who were called Israelites. They're still called Israelites, but they also took a new name. And now we are white Western European people. That's who we are, the Caucasian people. We are the Israelites of old. So the hour means us. Doesn't mean everybody of the earth. And while he is commonly called the Lord or God, the false reason given to the masses is because of ancient Jewish tradition. Remember the traditions of the elders? of the Jewish, what we call Jewish scribes and Pharisees. This alleged tradition stated that the name Yahweh was not to be spoken for fear that the name be blasphemed. Oh, he said, Yahweh's too much of a holy name for you to talk about and say. You're not to say that name because, oh, you've got to be careful. Yahweh never said that. Yahweh said he wanted his people to proclaim his name. You are to call upon the name of Yahweh. You go into your strongs and look up name. You want to do an exhaustive study? Look up name. And see how many times Yahweh said to call upon his name. To pray in his name. To rejoice in his name. But you've been lied to by Judeo-Christianity and that Catholic church. Because Judeo-Christianity are nothing but second-hand Catholics, which spawned out of that Catholic church, that bastardized church of Satan of 324 A.D. People say, well, you're picking on the Catholics. Well, of course I am. Of course I am. If I didn't, I'd be contrary to Yahweh. I pick on all religion because all religion is not from Yahweh. These are books of history and law written to a peculiar people above all other peoples of the earth. His sons and daughters, the true Israelites, the white Western European people, and the nations thereof. We are the only people who fulfill prophecy 100%. Now, i got a question for you. Now, you know, I'm a simple man, so I have to ask questions. Show me in here where you are to pray with a rosary. Show me. Can anyone show me in here where you're to pray with a rosary? Can you show me in here where you're to pray to idols, statues? I can show you where Yahweh said you're not to do it. Is this correct? But when you can prove that to me and come and show me where you can pray with a rosary or you can praise to idols because Yahweh said you're not to worship any image of heaven or of earth. It's very important, okay? And that's why we're going in his name today, Yahweh. And as I told you, in the Aramaic, in the ancient Hebrew, the word Yahweh appeared 6,800 times. Now something happened, something happened to remove that name from the mind and the mouth of his people, deliberately. There was a deliberate crime committed. Now, now this tradition does not agree with the historical writings of Yahweh through his prophets which declare that his name be exalted, such as Psalm 68, 4. Psalm 68, 4. I'll turn to it. Psalm 68, 4. What does that say? It says, Sing unto Yahweh. They put God in there. Sing unto Yahweh and sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. They got capital J, capital A, capital H, but is by his name Yahweh and rejoice before him. Now who wrote that? 
Well, there was a king that wrote it. Psalmist David. David was not only a king, he was a warrior. He was not only a warrior, he was a prophet of Yahweh. Not many of the kings were prophets. David was a prophet and a king. And a warrior. All right? Now the preface of some of the Bibles, we'll call it the Bibles, or the 66 books, will declare why they changed his name. And nearly all of them in the preface will say, cite tradition and familiarity as a reason, and they are 100% wrong. I come to you today as a teacher of the old guard of Yahweh. A lot of people don't like me, and I don't care. I do not change in the middle of the stream. I will not water this truth down to try and get a few more people in that I can bilk or do what I want to do to tell them what they want to hear. No, I won't do that. Yahweh stated what? Go back to the old ways. Return back to my way, saith Yahweh. It's very important. Now, next please. Now because of the detailed nature of the graphics that we are going to discuss at this time, we have to enter into more time periods as related to His name and the proper use thereof. A lot of people call Him Christ. A lot of people call Him Lord. A lot of people call Him God. A lot of people call Him Jesus. And this is why this study is taking place today. This is why it's been prepared to today. All right? Now, the first is a paleo fragment. Now, we know from our teachings here, all right, that the word paleo means ancient. That's all it means. Or, we, this is the first of an ancient fragment of the Septuagint dated between 50 BCE and 50 AD. And if this dating is correct, it would have been written near the time of the ministry of Him in the flesh. Alright? Now, the name of these paleo fragments are Nehal, Hever, Minor Prophets. And because they are fragments of Jonah... Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and Zechariah found in the Neha Hever Cave south of Qumran in the Mideast. Yes. Yahweh's name in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now this is a photo of Psalms 119, 59 to 64. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are a collection of Hebrew scriptures that date back 2,000 years. Note, Yahweh's name in ancient Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew script, right here, while the rest of the text is in a more modern Hebrew that was used at the time. Also note that each line begins with the Hebrew letter Heth, which corresponds with its part in the 119th Psalm. All right? Now, in Hebrew, in English, we read from left to right. Is this correct? Most of the young people, they just can't read, so it doesn't matter. In Hebrew, you read from right to left. They've even got us reading backwards. Everything is backwards. That's what they've given to us. Now, down here, we have what they call the modern Hebrew. This is the text of the Dead Sea Scrolls. But down here in that Dead Sea Scrolls was the Paleo-Hebrew or the Ancient Hebrew is the name Yahweh that was inserted in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Not God. Not Yah. People call me up and say, Will Yah be with you? I say, Oh, don't you hang up on me. <clears throat> don't you hang up on me. I don't know who Yah is. Is that like yin yang? Yah yah? Don't you hang up on me. We have got to have a little discussion here. You say Yahweh be with you, fine. But I don't want to hear this Yah. You think our Father wants to be called by a nickname? 
George over here. What if I said, hey, Jer? How about Bill? Bill? Hey, Bill. People say, well, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. No, 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 you see. Our people are stiff-necked and stubborn. And they don't want to change. They get comfortable, but the problem is they get comfortable with the wrong things. Is that right? It's like Jim here. What if I said, Jim? Hey, Jim. Well, that's like saying, yeah. We all what? Now, it seems minor, doesn't it? But it isn't because our people out here, and I'm talking about people in the racial identity movement, are what? It's a disease. Is this right, Pastor Campbell? Absolutely. And I don't know if it's their lazy where they just, yeah, they can't say, where? It's like they need a double shot of vitamin C or something. Oh, yeah. If you're listening, I'm witnessing to you if you're doing this now. Okay? And if you're praying and you think Yah is listening to you, you're wrong. Yahweh is listening to you if you call upon His name. Not Jesus. Now, I wanted to bring this text up out of the Dead Sea Scrolls because Yahweh's name is in fullness in Paleo or Ancient Hebrew in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Remember, we read from right to left. Next, please. <clears throat> now, if you'll notice, in the Tetragramination is written in the Ancient Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew script. All right? This is very important here. See, the black arrow is going right up here to Yahweh. Yahweh. This is very important. Is there anything on the top of that sheet? No, it, there's not, is there? No? Okay. I want you to remember this now. Yahweh. It doesn't say Jesus. Alright? It says Yahweh. Next, please. This is the first fragment. Here is the second fragment. I think there's something on the top. Another example of this ancient fragment of the Septuagint dating to the first century A.D. Why is it important now that I'm going to talk about the first century A.D., which is a hundred years, allegedly, allegedly after the crucifixion there, and almost a hundred years therein, okay? We know that the B.C. A.D., there's a time equation there, but we're going to be 90-some years beyond the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. Why is it important that I want to put this part of the Septuagint up? Because, raise that up please, because there are no other earlier fragments that also contain the sacred name in like manner. According to scholars, no copies of the Septuagint dated before the mid-2nd century substitutes the tetragramination of Yahweh's name with Chrysos, a Greek word for Lord. Here is the Septuagint. Here it is. In, we are up into the first century. And in the scrolls of the first century, which equals a hundred years, okay, the name Yahweh appears in the writings. Not Jesus, not Christ, not Lord, not God, but Yahweh. Why is this important? Because see, he had already come, he had already been crucified, he had already risen, and his disciples by this time at the end of the first century were dead. And then you had the apostles, and the apostolic fathers then came into being. And then the word game started to be proceeding. And we're going to get into that word game today. And how they did it. And why they did it. And they did it deliberately, Satan and his little kids. Because Matthew in the book of the Wheat and Tares tells you that Satan is the wicked one and he's got children on this earth. Is this correct? Yep. 
And our Father in the flesh body identified them in John 8, 44 by saying, Ye are your father the devil. Is this correct? And then he identified him even more by saying in John 8, 47, Ye are not even of Yahweh. Well, how would he know? Because he was Yahweh. You think he doesn't know who his children are? If you've got children, don't you think you know who your children are? But see, these Jews thought they were going to slick talk him. And they didn't understand that they were talking to him who created the heavens and the earth and everything therein, who even knows when a bird falls out of its nest. But see, they're more subtle and what? More cunning and subtle than any beast of the field. Isn't that what it says? That's right. And they thought they could smooth talk themselves right by the master himself. And they couldn't do it. So, why is this important? Why is this so important right here? That we bring this Septuagint out, which is more than a century old, into A.D. because it proves unequivocally that his name, Yahweh, were in the ancient writings a hundred years after the ascension. Now, if his name was Yahweh a hundred years A.D., that means between a hundred years A.D. and 2005, somebody had to do something to change his name to the people. Well, I told you this is going to be a very important study. And why is it going to be so important? I've already told you that. Because those who call upon his name shall be saved, saith Yahweh. Next, please. Now, in the Masoretic, if we went into the 119th Psalm, Psalm 59 to 64, all right, we can come in. This is from uh, right to left. You're looking at the Masoretic now. We come down here, and there is Yahweh's name. Not Jesus. Not Christ. Well, I'll, I'll get a better shot of this so you can exampleize up here. I, I've spent a lot of hours on this one. I'm going to drive a nail so deep in that coffin, they couldn't pull it out with 10 horses and 15 jackasses, and they're all Judeo Christian preachers, the jackasses. Praise the Next, please. Now, if you go into English. If you go into the English now of the 119th Psalm, verses 56 to 64, or 59 to 64, okay, we come down, now we're reading from left to right, I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies, I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments, the cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law, at midnight I will rise to give thanks to you. Because of your righteous judgments, I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, down here in your book, says Lord. But in the Septuagint, it said Yahweh. Yahweh is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. Whoa, we're going to ring some bells here today. People say, well, you're going to get people a little angry. You know, you shouldn't be so blunt. I shouldn't. You don't think I'm enjoying this? I've had to put up with that squibbly squabbly of people who want to attack on a continual basis that I can call him whatever I want and he's going to know who I'm talking to. No, it doesn't work that way. But you know what it's going to do? It's going to give the people available and an opportunity, the real opportunity to know why they did it, who did it, but most of all, Yahweh is a revealer of truth. Is he not? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I had people who've come to study some of my studies for a year and a half who couldn't stop saying, Lord. And they come to me and they said, I don't know what's the matter with me. I keep saying, Lord, but as soon as I say it, I know I did wrong. And I say, Yahweh. I said, yes, but it, you're getting there. You have been... How many years? This man was almost 70 years old at the time. I said, how many years have you been programmed to say that? But I said, even now you've showed me 
that you know when you say it right away, you know you did wrong and you say Yahweh. So I said, you're working, you're working on the right path and Yahweh knows this. Okay? Is not Yahweh merciful to those who love him? Yep. Yes, he is. Okay, next please. Now, I've thrown all three of them up here for you. <clears throat> Here's Yahweh's name in the Dead Sea Scrolls, Psalm David, the Psalm of David, 119, 59 to 64, reading from left to right. There is Yahweh. Down here, right to left. Down here in the uh, Masoretic text is Yahweh. Down here in English, and I didn't leave it there because I won't put it up there, is Yahweh, should be Yahweh. If it is in, if it's up here, all right, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, is Yahweh. Here, one night of uh, Psalm one nineteen, in the Septuagint. If this is the Masoretic of Yahweh, don't you think in English? Because this is the same Psalm one nineteen that they're talking about. What name belongs here? Yahweh. Yahweh. It was there a hundred years A.D. until someone removed it. Someone who didn't want the white Western European people to know his name. Next, please. And it's nothing to be ashamed of if, you know, you've been lied to. I'd be angry. Oh, I was angry many years ago when I found out not only was I lied to about this, I was lied to about everything else, just like you. Now, let's get into some meat of the matter. What about this Jesus? I've had an identity person tell me, well, I'm a Jesus teacher. I said, you are? What's that? Who did? What, what's that? Who did? Well, let's find out. When the translators tried to transliterate his name into Greek, they came up with the Greek or Isus. Right here. But originally this word was from 3091 in the Hebrew which is Yahweh. When Isus was transliterated into Latin, the dead language, by the way, it became Isis, which was then carried over into English, and it became the modern-day Jesus when the letter J was developed into... That's right. When it was, the J was developed into our vocabulary, it became Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus is not Yahweh. So this is how they conveniently, and I'm going to start right with the 324 A.D. bastardized Roman Catholic Church and their scribes and their monks who took and removed the name Yahweh, which was still present 100 years A.D., 100 years A.D., but by 324 A.D., they had already taken the Greek, all right, Bring that down just a little. They had already taken the Greek. When they put the name into Greek, they came up with Isis. Right here. They mistranslated it deliberately. Well, when you take the Hebrew word, which is Yahweh, well, when Isis was transliterated into Latin, the dead language, and Latin comes from the Roman Catholic Church, hello! What happened? It became Isis. And Isis was then ca carried over into years. It was Isis. Until the J became a part of our vocabulary and they changed it to Jesus. That's what happened. Now, up please. It is quite apparent and evident that the modern form Jesus does not I will reiterate that. Does not. You can capitalize that. You can put strobe lights on it. You can underline it. You can put, what kind of paint is it that glows in the dark? Yes. Fluorescent. Fluorescent paint on it does not. Even remotely resemble the original name that the disciples were praying in, baptizing in, and receiving so much criticism for teaching in.
you think about this. You're very quiet. Your wheels are turning. Wheels better be turning out there too. Yahweh is His name. Next please. <clears throat> now the third commandment. What is its meaning? Well, many people take the third commandment to mean that we should not use the Heavenly Father's name alongside a swear word or profanity. Is this correct? That is correct. Is that true? Uh -huh. Okay. I could see where it certainly might mean this, but others say that taking His name on our lips while living a life of sin is another way of taking His name in vain. I can also agree with that. But, but, underline, fluorescent paint, strobe lights, but, I must inform you that the third commandment means much more than this. Replacing the Heavenly Father's name with a title of your own choosing, such as the Lord, God, Adonai, or Hashem, is another way of taking His name in vain. Who said, I hear all and see all? Yahweh. Yahweh. Every word. Now think about it. And especially the people who know better. That deliberately want to say, like Pete Peters, oh, Yahweh is in his name. You can use Lord and Jesus. This is a false teacher. This is drastic error. That's right. This person is not worthy to be listened to because he profanes the name of Yahweh our Father. I'm bringing this up as an example. I'm not afraid of anybody. When I have a problem, I call on the name of Yahweh. Now, let us examine the third commandment as it is written in the King James of Deuteronomy 51.11 Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh in vain for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Isn't that right? Now you think about this. Think of the consequences. You know, Yahweh is full of love to those who will love him and obey him. Is this correct? Yep. But what is he against those that hate him? Wrath. Indignation. Is this correct? That's right. My heart goes out to our race. Now think about it. To our race in the Judeo-Christian churches who do not have an opportunity to do, do not have an opportunity to at least be able to see and understand the situation. Now we have a nice little track out that's called Yahweh's name. Many of you have read it. Is this correct? This is a deeper study. This is a deeper study. This should be taught in all the great so-called seminaries, okay, or the so-called biblical colleges. This should be presented to those people to give them the opportunity. But you know, <clears throat> are we to cast our pearls before swine who will just want to rend you? I say the truth to people and they come and say, I don't like him. They don't like me for telling the truth. That's what it's all about. I don't want to turn from my ways even though I know they're wrong. My priest said it doesn't matter. He said that what I tell him is true. To trust, to trust him. I told you about this Ken out there in Massachusetts about five, six years ago. He found out that this Catholic priest had retired. I don't know how you retire from teaching Yahweh's truth. He had retired. <laughs> well, you do if you work for a corporation like the Vatican in a foreign nation. So Ken went over and he was into the book of Matthew at the time. And he was just getting started in understanding. So he knocked on the door and this retired priest comes to the door and he said, I just, I heard that you're a retired Catholic priest. And he said, yeah. He said, boy, he says, can you help me? He says, I'm studying in the book of Matthew. Could you help me understand it better? The priest says, no. He says, I've never read it. Well, let's continue here. Okay? Next, please. 
Now, if we examine this verse in the Hebrew text of the King James, which was translated from, we would not find Lord or any word that carries such a meaning. What is, what is actually there is our Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh. I believe it is important to consider whether or not this tradition is something Yahweh would desire His people to follow. Do you think Yahweh wants His sons and daughters to forget His name? Do you think He wants His sons and daughters to be lied to about His name? Do you think on that wall in Washington, D.C., from Vietnam, all the names carved on that wall, that they're all supposed to be an error? Do you think the people would be mad if those names were written in error on that wall of those who died in Vietnam? Do you think they'd raise a big stink? Yeah, they'd raise a big stink. And why aren't our people raising a big stink? Because our Father's name. Isn't our Father's name more powerful and important than any name on this planet? You think about these things now. Okay? Now, I believe it is important to consider whether or not this tradition is something Yahweh would desire His people to follow. Now let us take a look at Webster's Dictionary, the word vain. Vain has two parts. Vain, having no real substance, value, or importance. Taking His name in vain. Remember this now. His name in vain, not saying the correct name. Having no real substance, Jesus Christ, God, Lord, no value or importance, an empty, void, worthless, unsatisfying, thy vain excuse, or destitute of forge of efficiency, effecting no purpose, fruitless, ineffectual, as vain toil, a vain attempt. Taking his name in vain. Now we're going to get down and we're going to get right down chew on that bone today. Because I'm not up here on His feast. This is my Father's feast. This ain't my feast. This isn't your feast. This is Yahweh's feast. Yahweh said you're to teach His people and to teach them things that they are not going to forget and new things or whatever to strengthen them in Yahweh, to make them strong. People say, you know, Pastor Wicks was too militant. And Peter wasn't. Who drew out his sword and cut off the ear of that guy in the Garden of Gethsemane? Peter wasn't militant. Hmm. <laughs> Confiscated his weapon too. Yeah. And Yahweh didn't say, "Oh, Peter, that was terrible. That was terrible, Peter." Peter said, "Yahweh said to Peter, it's not time yet. <laughs> it's not time yet." And he bent down, picked up the ear. And he stuck it right on the guy's head like it had never been cut off. He said, think not that I could not call down legions of angels, but the time is not yet. Enoch says in the end day, angelic beings, the same beings that Abraham fixed goat for, shall descend from the heavens and fight alongside the children of light and shall annihilate the children of darkness. Judeo-Christianity in the Catholic Church has everyone going up. <laughs> Yahweh said the angelic warrior angels are coming down. But don't they always have things backwards? Isn't Satan always 180 degrees opposite of Yahweh? Think about it now. Yahweh says you're not to eat the pig. They tell you out here, Go ahead and eat the pig. Is this correct? It won't hurt you. It's protein. It's the other white meat. <laughs> Next, please. Now, consider the meaning of the word vain. What greater way to bring the name of Yahweh to emptiness? Worthlessness having no real substance, value, or purpose then to remove his name altogether from Scripture and substitute it with a title of one's own choosing. Think about this. Those who have chosen to practice abomination are doing just that. 
This practice is so widespread and so complete that few of his Jacob Israel, white Western European people, know that our Heavenly Father has a personal name, Yahweh. Oh, please. Yahweh chose to place his name in Scripture nearly 7,000 times. And each one of those 7,000 times is replaced with a title in here. Every one of them. Such as the Lord, or whatever else they felt led to do, contrary to calling him by his true name, Yahweh. I hope I'm driving a point here. I hope I'm driving a point of understanding here. Our Father Yahweh said, everything is for you to know and to understand. I told you before, we can look up. Oh, that's a Buick out there. Hmm. Oh, that is a Buick. Now, you know it's a Buick, but he also said you're to understand how to get in it and drive it. Everything is for you to know and to understand, O oh, Israel, Jacob Israel. People say, Pastor Wickstrom, why do you always repeat yourself and say Jacob, Jacob Israel? Because I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. I never ever refer to that Israelite litter box in the Mideast. When I say Jacob Israel, I'm referring to Jacob, who was surnamed Israel, and to Israel's progeny, who are the white Western European peoples today and the nations thereof. That's why. See, we got to remove the confusion, okay, and the delusion among our people. We've got to lift that veil. We've got to put window wash on the window and clean it so they can look out and clearly see and understand what has happened to them. They're not supposed to get mad at me. They're supposed to get mad at the people who've lied to them all their life. I'm not the enemy, O oh Israel, O oh Jacob Israel. It's just like when we put on uh, our study about the Gentile. If you look it up, it means a troop of animals. I'd be so mad that this preacher that I was in his so-called church for 10 years calling me a Gentile every Sunday, if I found that up, I'd go up and smack him right in the face for calling me an animal. They said, well, he didn't know any better. Then he didn't belong up there teaching. He wasn't qualified. Okay. Boy. Next, please. Now, Genesis 4, 26. And as for Seth, to him also was a son born, and he named his name Enosh. And the men, then men, or Adamites via Seth, men, who man, spirit men, begin to call upon the name of Yahweh. But in your Bible it says the Lord. Remember they had the disciples, and they were out teaching? Oh, and they were mad, because the disciples were out teaching. So they grabbed them all and threw them in jail. I've been in jail. I've been in jail for my beliefs. I've been persecuted for my beliefs. You've been persecuted for your beliefs. If you've been rendered by a mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, child, can we keep going? Co-worker. Okay? You've been rendered. They let all these disciples out because they saw the people were listening to them. They walked up to the disciples and they said, you can teach anything you want, but you cannot teach his name. It's right in here. It's right here. Now do you know why? Because if we don't know his name, we can't call on our Father. Those who call upon my name of my people shall be saved, saith Yahweh. If you don't know his name, you're calling out into the dark and he's not hearing you. Next, please. Exodus 3.15 Moreover, Yahweh said to Moses, Thus, 
you shall say to the children of Jacob Israel, Yahweh of your fathers, Yahweh of Abraham, Yahweh of Isaac, Yahweh of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. Exodus 3.15. You know what forever means? Forever. Forever. From the time of Moses, as he was speaking this, as we stand here, right here today, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. And as Yahweh said it, it was done. But see, there's someone who's very cunning and subtle and didn't want his name to be understood. <laughs> and that was Satan and his children, who you call Jews today, modern Jewry, working in conformity with that bastardized Catholic Church of 324 A.D., who blames the Romans all this time of crucifying him when it wasn't the Romans, it was the Jew Herodonians. They've laid the guilt of crucifying Yahweh on the back of the Romans for almost 2,000 years. And it was the Jews who crucified him. Oh, I am telling you. Next, please. Psalms 116.13. Who wrote the book of Psalms? David. David was also a king and he was also a what? A prophet, wasn't he? I, David, will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of Yahweh. Who said I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever? I change not, saith Yahweh. You think he changed his name? Maybe he went into the probate court down here in Detroit and he changed his name. Or maybe he went to the probate division of the Vatican and changed his name because he was ashamed of it. Maybe he did that. See? But you see, after a while, this should anger you if you have been lied to this much. This should really set you off and anger you because if anything should anger anybody, it's to be lied to. Is this correct? That's right. Next, please. Here's Jeremiah 23, 26 to 27. Before they had a J, it was a Y. Jeremiah. I remember my grandma of Scandinavia, my grandma used to call me Yimmy. She had, they had never put the J into their vocabulary. And she always called me Yimmy. Yimmy. Yes, Grandma. I knew who she was talking to. But see, she came from the old country. They never had taken the J into their vocabulary, so it was Yimmy. Same with the Hebrew. See? And they changed it from Isis, Isis, off the Greek. When the J became prevalent, they changed it to Jesus. Pretty crafty, huh? Let's see what Jeremiah the prophet has to say. Verses 26 and 27. <clears throat> Excuse me. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets or the teachers? We can call them modern ministers, Lutheran ministers, Methodist ministers, Baptist ministers, Pentecostal ministers, Catholic priests, uh, Unitarians, uh, um, uh, and all the rest. I think there's 3,170 who prophesize lies. Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who tried to make my people, Jacob Israel, the white Western European people, Forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbors, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal or Lord. It wasn't just you. They've done it to your mother and father. They've done it to your grandma and grandpa. They did it to your great grandma and grandpa. They did it between 100 A.D. when Yahweh's name was still prevalent to 324 A.D. when the bastardized Church of Rome was created by Constantine, who held himself up as not only a dictator, but the high priest. And then he had a, a meeting of Nicaea, 
And he asked all the sages and the prophets and the teachers of truth at that time to bring all their scrolls and all their writings. They were going to have a big meeting. And Constantine told them, bring everything. Well, this is going to really be something. They brought them all right. And Constantine grabbed them and he murdered them and he burnt their scrolls and he started what's now known as the Roman Catholic Church. And that's history. Now, he also burned the library in Alexandria. He burned the library in Alexandria, the greatest library on the surface of the earth. The greatest library that's ever existed. Now, would you lift that up just a little for me, please? Now, read this very carefully, what Jeremiah is saying to you here. It says... Indeed, these modern-day prophet teachers of deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbors as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Now, some people think his name is Yahshua. It's been said. I've used that term until I've corrected myself. Is Yahshua a name or is it a title? Another title. What is that title? God saves. God is salvation. Now, see, it, it's not just us. It's our fathers, our ancestors, and everything. These ministers have gotten us to forget Yahweh's name and substitute it for Baal, which is Lord. Go into the Strong's Concordance and look up Baal. <clears throat> Go in there and look up Lord. It means Baal. Baal worship. Go back and read what Baal worship was. It was contrary to Yahweh. Is this correct? That's right. Now, next please. Now, if we go to 1 Kings 18 to 21... And Elijah came to all the people. Now, you know who Elijah was. Now, he was a good guy. And he had quite a contest with the ministers of that day who were teaching falsely, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Hmm? And remember, it had something to do about an altar and pouring water on it? Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? And do you remember what Elijah did to them false teachers at that time at the brook of Kashan? He decapitated them. So many of them, it's written in the ancient scrolls, that it stopped the water from running. Water didn't even flow. Flooded. Yeah, a lot of people lost their head over that. <laughs> Elijah, you're a good man. <laughs> and Elijah came to all the people and said, How long would you falter between two opinions? Now think about it. If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Lord, Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. That's what you got in this country today. Now there's going to be some people, nice people. They're not going to like what I've said here. And I really don't care. I feel if I'm at peace with Yahweh, I can sleep at night. That's what it's all about, isn't it? When we wake up in the morning, aren't we to thank him for another day? Before we go to sleep tonight, we lay our head on our pillow. Aren't we to thank Yahweh that He has given us another day? He said the main reason He's given you a tongue was to praise His name. Now think about it. He has a lot of titles, but He only has one name. Next, please. That's it, right? Is that the last? Nope. Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah was a wonderful prophet. He was a prophet of his time and a latter-day prophet. All right? Jeremiah was the youngest of the prophets. <clears throat> That's why they didn't want to listen to him because they thought he was too young and they were older than you and they thought they were smarter. And they despised him so much, the house of Jacob Israel, that they actually took and threw him in a dung pit where everyone went and defecated. And Jeremiah was down there. And they are laughing at him. They were laughing at him. Just like they laughed at me when they had me in chains and they kicked the Bible across the floor and said, I don't want to hear any more about this GD book. 
I said, you know, you've really brought a curse on you and your family. Now think about it. And what they did to me is they set me up because they knew what I was doing is right and they couldn't stand it. Because that's okay. I, got a, I, I had a captivated audience for a while. Did you know? Praise Yahweh. And taught thousands of people about Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Okay. In Isaiah 41.4, who has wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, Yahweh, the first and with the last, I am He. Now, this is important. Now, read it very carefully. Read it carefully now. We'll go over it again. I, Yahweh, the first, and, in other words, will be with the last, you, I am He. He doesn't say I'm the first and the last. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the first and I am with the last. That's you, His saints. I am He. <clears throat> Isaiah 44, 6. Thus saith Yahweh, the king of Jacob, Israel. Jacob was surnamed who? Israel. We are the descendants of who? Jacob. Jacob. We are the Israelites. <clears throat> we are the nations of Israel. Thirteen tribes, twelve nations on the earth. They all came forth 2,520 years after they came out of captivity as Jeremiah the prophet prophesied. They would go toward the going down of the sun westward toward the misty isles. And 2,520 years from the time that every tribe except Levi came out of what bondage? They would become a nation on this earth. And it has all been Prophesize, it has all been taken care of and done with. <clears throat> we are the only race upon the earth that fulfills all the prophecy of the books. All of it. <clears throat> now, in Isaiah 44, 6, Thus saith Yahweh, the King of Jacob, Israel, and His Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts, Redeemer? Hmm. If you're going to be redeemed, or something's going to be given back to you, redemption, something had to be stolen from you. If you call His name Jesus, well, you've just been redeemed because now you know His name is Yahweh. Hmm. I am the first. I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. Well, these Buddhas are in trouble. <laughs> these Muslims are in trouble too. The Yehudi Shatan, called modern Jewry, is in trouble too. They're in serious trouble. We know who their God is. Our Father told us in John eight forty four. <clears throat> I remember when I was in the army overseas. I had this little Jap, <clears throat> this little Oriental that slept on a bunk above me. He was harmless. Just a squat little guy, you know, from Hawaii. And he had a, a piece of leather, a leather string, and he had a wooden statue on the thing. And I got up one day and I was looking at it and he was standing there and he was talking in broken English, Japanese English. Kind of broken English. And I said to him, what's that on your neck? Well, you Buddha. I said, Buddha who? <laughs> Buddha who? I didn't know my identity then, but... I knew enough that, you know, I wondered what that piece of wood was doing there, you know. I thought maybe if he got lost that night out hunting, he could make a fire or something. I don't know. <laughs> he said, I, this is Buddha who I worship. I said, oh, I said, I see. I said, well, what do you got a hole through his head and that leather in it there for? <laughs> well, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm telling you. Besides me, Yahweh, there is no God. One more. <laughs> now, in Revelation, John the Revelator. Now, 
Now, who's John the Revelator? Well, he's the same John as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He, he's also the same St. John. <laughs> a lot of writings of John. I like the writings of John here, okay? And it says in verse 8 of Revelations 1, I am Alpha and Omega. It should be I am Alpha and Ta, because that is the Hebrew alphabet. Alpha starts it, the Ta ends it. The translators put Omega there. I am the Alpha and the Ta. I am the beginning and the ending. Alpha is the beginning of the Hebrew. Ta, T-A-U, is the ending of the Hebrew alphabet. This is wrong. I am Alpha and Ta, the first and the last. Verse 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he saying to me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, so be it. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Does it say that? Well, I thought the Catholics said Peter had them. <laughs> I, thought, I thought Peter... <laughs> would they lie? <laughs> I thought Peter had the keys of hell and death. If he didn't have the keys of hell and death, how do they have purgatory? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I see that in the cemeteries now. they got all them little candle holders. They must make a lot on them. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, the people must be fortunate down there to have that candle burning on top and light up the bottom, right? Very helpful. Yeah. It has nothing to do with idol worship, does it? No. And you know, i, I got a question because I'm just a simple man, Okay. If Yahweh conquered death and the grave when he was crucified as our Redeemer and ascended back into the heavens and said that I have a place for you, how is it that these ministers out there <clears throat> can say that if you don't go to their church, you're going to go to hell? I've been trying to figure that out for 30 years. <laughs> now, isn't that interesting? But the Corinthians says, those who come from the heavens return to the heavens. There's the heavenly and there's the earthly. That's very interesting. Didn't Paul make it out to be instantaneous? To be absent of the body and present with glory? Absolutely. In the presence of Yahweh. So you see, this is where we're at. 6,800 times the name Yahweh was in the scriptures. And they removed every one of them. And the example of all this is to look back and see what they said to his disciples. You think the disciples didn't know his name? I've just proved to you through the Septuagint and through the writings a hundred years after the crucifixion resurrection, his name was still Yahweh written into the into the scrolls. <clears throat> his name wasn't Jesus his name was not Yahshua that's a title <clears throat> God is salvation there's only one name and there's only one people that he loves above all other families and people of the earth and that is his people Jacob Israel <clears throat> and he said if it was not even for my elect those who know me and call upon my name I wouldn't even bother to be doing anything you mean it ain't boogla boogla you mean it ain't boogla boogla <laughs> yeah yeah so you see we have so much to be thankful for that we know who's who and who's Jew that's right and this is coming out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is becoming a child of light coming out of the people of darkness to better know him, to love him, and to obey him, and to call upon his name. Yahweh. Yahweh. This is what it's all about. That's why he said, go back to the old ways. Go back to the ways of old, the ways of Yahweh. <clears throat> That's what it's all about. Our race has 759 laws. That's all there is for prosperity, for peace among us. 
We're not a race of religion. Religion is a veil. We are a race with history and laws and statutes and commandments and ordinances that Yahweh has given to us. No stranger, no nakri, no nakri. Those not of us are even to live among us. And look as we look across our country today. We take a look at the racial mongrelization, which is epidemic in our nation. I see them all the time down here in the supermarkets and all over the place, and it's mostly these white women bringing in these black savages with that little it. It isn't white and it isn't black. That's it. They don't even know what it is. And I see the grandmas, 50 and 60 years old, who were raised in a different way, bringing them into restaurants and so proud to show them off that little mulatto that her daughter bared. You see it and so do I. It's a shame to us. It's a shame cast upon our society. And it's a part of punishment to our people. All these things that are happening in our land today, from the hurricanes... <clears throat> to the epidemics of pestilence, to undeclared wars of the killing off of our young son and men are because is because of direct disobedience against Yahweh our Father. And that's the punishment, and that is the fruit that they are receiving for disobedience is their own sons and daughters dying in that hellhole in Afghanistan and Iraq. You've heard all these Judeo Christians saying, Oh, President Bush is right, we gotta to go to war. <coughs> well, how come two Bush's two daughters didn't go to war? If that war is so noble, why doesn't his two little daughters go fight in that war? Where's Dave? Of all the senators, of all the congressmen and women, only one congressman has a son in Iraq. If war is so noble, let the great leaders lead the way. But see, Yahweh knows how to deal with his people. And he's dealing with them. <clears throat> and modern day Jewry are the Antichrist. They are the anti-Yahweh. Our father told you in that allegory called the parable of the wheat and the tares. That there is Satan. He is the wicked one and he has children in this earth. First John told you that the wicked one, Cain, was of the wicked one. Oh, I thought they came from Esau. The book, of, the book of Titus tells you don't believe Jewish fables. I know who Judah is. Judah is the Germanic people and the Irish and the Scots. We've gone over that in three different uh, intensive studies here. And we've gone into their symbols and we've gone into their flags. And we've got into everything about them to identify who they are. And it was the Irish that took in, uh, uh, back in 1500, they sent a proclamation to the Pope and they, all the, uh, the clan members or the leaders had put their seal to this declaration. They sent it to the Pope in Rome and said, we know we are the children of Jacob and we are the children of Israel. Well, they've also forgot their way. We know that Teotifi went there, Teotafi. We know Jeremiah and Baruch are buried there. We know that Miriam, the son of Yahweh, I mean the mother of Yahweh, Miriam, not Mary. Mary's anglicized. Miriam is buried in the island of Avalon. It's all documented. It's all available. But because our people are told lies every week, and week and week and oh if you do anything to the Jews God's going to curse you oh I bet God will <laughs> Yahweh won't but their God will and that God is Satan and you remember that battle in Revelations of John the Divine and Michael destroyed him in battle and he was cast down onto the earth and he came with other devils he didn't come alone so you see, the name Yahweh, this is, if there's anything you ever remember in your life, if you lost your entire vocabulary, but you could have your choice of one word that you could say 
for the rest of your life, it would have to be Yahweh. So I want to uh, thank you for your patience. And if I've offended anybody, I'm not sorry. (laughs) And uh, we've got to cope with our own problems. We all grow. We all grow. Do you understand? This is a growing process here. No, No intimidation was intended here whatsoever. I'm just a different kind of teacher, okay? I tell it like it is. You walk the walk and you talk the talk. Praise you. Okay? And you know, there's an old saying, put up that feast of... Uh, you walk softly, but you what? Carry a big... Carry a big stick. Praise Yahweh. We're going to have a break until we eat, okay? Praise Yahweh.